Chapter 198, Appropriating Uniqueness. The silver charm suddenly turned ice gold, just like a crystal coat with layers of frost. Klein shivered and suddenly became more alert. His fear and agitation temporarily froze. He quickly injected his spirituality into the charm and pushed the thin silver piece out of his pocket with his fingertip, causing it to drop to his feet. A crimson flame appeared in the air, and the sound of light, continuous explosions echoed in the room. A serene and deep feeling instantly emanated and engulfed most of the bedroom, including Madame Sharon, Sleepless Kenley, and also Klein himself. The slumber charm was an item that didn't distinguish between the enemy and the caster. In most situations, using it meant throwing it at the enemy. That way, the caster would only be affected by the remnant shock waves, but not to the extent of failing to resist the temptation of falling into a deep sleep. But Klein's arms were entangled by countless invisible threads. He couldn't throw the charm, so he could only exchange Madame Sharon's slumber with his. But he had long considered such a situation and was prepared. This was because his body was Uniquia uniqueness that was unlike most low sequence beyonders. In that instant, Klein's eyelids closed and entered into deep sleep normally, while Madame Sharon and Kenley also appeared to slow down. Klein quickly realized that he was in a dream and rationally knew that he was sleeping. Whenever anything related to dream invasions or similar hypnotic effects were used on him, he could still maintain consciousness. He had discovered this when he was dealing with Dunn's nightmare powers, as well as when Daly was channeling his spirit. Katja climbed to her out of the dream forcefully and woke up. He felt the countless threads binding his arms, legs, and body loosen. As for Madame Sharon, she had a vacant look as though she was going to shake off the effect of the slumber charm, but had yet to wake up entirely. Kinley was on the ground with a spirit medium mirror flipped upside down nearby, while his revolver had been flung to the door. An opportunity, Klein sized the moment while the fine threads loosened. He took out his left hand and snapped his fingers. He lit up a faint blue spiritual flame and burned the countless fine threads before him. At the same time, he picked up his revolver with his right hand and pulled the trigger repeatedly. Bang! Bang! Thetwo silver demon hunting bullets tore through the barrel and fired towards Madame Sharon. Klein didn't confirm the outcome, but bent his knees, exerted strength in his waist, and leaped over to Kenley. Simultaneously, he broke the fine strings that were tied around his body. His earlier shots were mainly to inform the captain that something unexpected had happened inside. They were already fighting and were in need of assistance. Of course, if he could shoot Madame Sharon directly, that'd be the best outcome. However, Klein didn't believe a sequence seven or six beyond her could be taken care of so easily. There were faint blue flames twirling in the air, dancing across the fine threads in the room. In such a dreamy scenery, the two silver demon hunting bullets struck Madame Sharon's body. Katja, Katja, Madame Sharon was in her translucent sleeping robe, and her indistinct body shattered like the crimson moon's reflection in a lake. The full body mirror next to her cracked into pieces, and most of them shattered into about thumbnail-sized chunks, while a small amount remained on the frame. They all resembled palms, strangely shaped palms. A substitute? A beyonder power of the demonist sequence? The corner of Klein's eyes swept over it as he already rolled next to Kenley. Since the fine strings were all broken by his movement, the faint blue flames didn't spread over. At that moment, Madame Sharon had vanished, but the sleeping Kenley lifted his hands and gripped his neck so tightly that his saliva began flowing out as his tongue protruded. But he didn't seem like he was going to stop. But in Klein's spirit vision, there weren't any abnormal things around. He suddenly recalled the description of sealed artifact 30271. The most dangerous situation is when you see yourself. Could it be that Kenley saw his own reflection in sealed artifact 30271 
through the full body mirror? Klein speculated. He quickly took out another silver charm, without having the luxury of time to think about it. It was a triangular shaped item, a requiem charm. Crimson Klein said the ancient Hermes word, while he instilled his spirituality into the charm and threw it out. Then, he pressed down his left hand and grabbed the spirit medium mirror. He used the corner of his eye to determine that the sealed artifact was facing downward, so it wouldn't reflect himself. The triangular silver charm ignited into icy blue flames. The gentle and serene darkness blanketed Kenley and affected Klein himself. The nervous emotions dispersed in that instant. Kenley relaxed his hands on his throat, while Klein felt like he was standing before his real window at home, overlooking the quiet streets. His physical and mental state was at peace. That was exactly what Klein wanted. At that very moment, he entered an extremely serene state. He appeared to be the only person left in the entire world with nothing else in existence. Within the sense of calmness, he suddenly had a gut feeling in his mind. Madam Sharon is about to attack my right waist. That was the foresight ability of a clown in battle. Without any hesitation, Klein lifted the spirit medium mirror and rolled to his left. Just as he moved, a dagger, burning in dark flames, pierced the spot where he had stood earlier. Madam Sharon's figure was outlined once again. As he rolled, Klein suddenly lifted the spirit medium mirror and pointed it at Madam Sharon. Besides saving his teammate, his main goal when he got close to Kenley was to pick up the sealed artifact. Otherwise, he didn't believe that anything good would come out of waiting for the captain's reinforcements while being next to Madame Sharon. The flaring sun charm could be used to fight against a Beyonder, but the effect wouldn't be as significant as if it was used against a dead spirit. Plus, the other person wouldn't just stand there and wait for him to use a charm. If it really didn't work, Klein could only take the risk and use Azik's copper whistle. Regarding how he would explain it, he would think about it after he managed to stay alive. However, things developed better than Klein had predicted. Madam Sharon opted for assassination. She didn't interrupt his use of the Requiem charm and the spirit medium mirror. Therefore, Klein had instantly formulated a simple plan. He didn't avoid the repercussions of the Requiem charm, but relied on it to enhance his foresight ability as a clown. Then, he seized the opportunity to dodge the attack while he used the spirit medium mirror to reflect the enemy. When Madam Sharon missed her strike, she immediately wanted to chase after her agile opponent who was rolling away. She suddenly saw a mirror with three cracks. The surface of the mirror rippled and a woman's figure appeared. Her hair was black and thick, hanging low and blocking her face. Klein's left hand shook and the spirit medium mirror glided on the carpet for a dozen centimeters with the front facing upwards. A pale hand extended out of the mirror and a woman in a white bed sheet like dress climbed out of the mirror quickly and pounced at Madame Sharon. Madame Sharon's expression became gloomy. There was a layer of darkness above her innocent brown eyes. Her surroundings ignited with seven black flames. With a swoosh, a black flame flew out and hit the woman in the white dress. Whoosh! Thuman caught on fire and wailed in pain. Very soon, she vanished into thin air. Sue! 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 The black flames flew at Klein, one after another like bullets. Klein's pupils constricted as he quickly rolled away. He didn't dare stay in that spot. However, his action of rolling gradually became slower, because there seemed to be fine threads entangling him again. They slowed him down and affected his motion. It seemed like the nemesis of the clown's combat abilities. The black flames flew past Klein's face and fell onto Madame Sharon's bed. However, it didn't burn, seemingly effective on items with life or spirituality. Klein had yet to feel rejoice over his successful dodge when another premonition flashed through his head. He twisted his spine and changed his forward flip into a side roll. A transparent ice crystal suddenly appeared like a spear 
and stabbed into the carpet where Klein had originally intended to land. The white frost expanded and struck Klein, whose actions were affected by the fine threads. He suddenly shivered, and his body became stiff. Although he could still move, he was much slower. Madame Sharon had black flames surrounding her again, and there was a transparent ice spear that condensed in her hands. Klein didn't hesitate any further as he shoved his hand into his pocket and grabbed Azik's copper whistle. He, he, he. Just then, Kenley shook off the effect of the Requiem and Slumber Charms. He got up and looked towards Madame Sharon with a pair of vacant-looking eyes. His face seemed to be blanketed by a shadow, making him look silent yet creepy. Thud, thud, thud. Kenley leaped at Madame Sharon, who was the closest. Madame Sharon narrowed her eyes and shot the black flames surrounding her one after another at Kenley. Poof, poof, poof. The black flames disappeared like snowflakes and didn't have any effect. Klein was stunned at first. Then he lifted the gun in his right hand and pulled the trigger while aiming at Madame Sharon. Bang and Madame Sharon dodged ahead of time and threw the frost spear towards Kenley, but it only penetrated his clothes and not his skin. Hence, it didn't create a freezing effect. Bang! Klein fired again, and Madame Sharon dodged to the side of the broken full-body mirror and picked up a palm-sized fragment. She continued to walk swiftly and dodged another bullet. She then used the irregular fragment to reflect Kenley as he leaped over at her. Right on the heels of that, Madame Sharon dodged to the side as she swiped the mirror with her palm, which was covered in black flames. At that moment, Klein had emptied his revolver. He had no choice but to throw it, letting the empty shells and revolver fall to the carpet. Just as he rolled over to pick up Kenley's revolver, he heard his teammate's tragic scream. Kenley stopped before bending over and vomiting. It was bile at first, then a red heart, followed by his lungs and stomach that were burning with black flames.